is the ACC on ESPN. This is also a sonic blockbuster. And is it ever? Number four, undefeated Virginia. Number one, Duke, coming off a loss against Syracuse on Monday night. And the Blue Devils, Mr. Bill, is playing without Trey Jones in this game tonight. Well, Trey Jones out with that shoulder injury. He is the, the really the key to this team, and I think the most important player. But they will be without him, their best defender, arguably the best defender at the country that puts tremendous pressure on the basketball. We are ready for the tip of our Sonic blockbuster. Big starting lineup for Duke. Bolden is in there. White is in there. All five Blue Devils stand at least 6-7. We're going to weave out top, getting some switches. R.J. Barrett with a three from the wing, not there. And Jack Salt, big strong guy on the inside. Blue collar guy for the Cavaliers down with the first rebound of the night. And R.J. Barrett guarding Ty Jerome and Ty Jerome is an outstanding guard and a great passer can see over defenses coming off a 12 assist performance against Virginia Tech got a switch here he's got Bolden on him a lot of time still on the shot clock here comes guy off a couple of screens Jerome with a floater over Bolden and Virginia strikes first Virginia is just unflappable and right at the top of the list of unflappable is Ty Jerome Cam Reddish last week, the game-winning three against Florida State. Remember, he didn't play against Syracuse. He was out with flu-like symptoms. Williamson into the paint, dumps it down to Bolden. He's double-teamed. Seven to shoot. Deep one for Reddish, and it goes! Cam Reddish missed the last ball game against Syracuse he had warmed up and then right before the final warm-up he's not out there became sick did not play at all but coming off a 23 point game at Florida State where he had five of eight from three and picking up right where he left off a deep one at the other end for Jerome around and out of the rebound down to Reddish without Trey Jones no true point guard out there for Duke a number of guys can handle and initiate the offense and we'll see who does that most of the night as Williamson is fouled by Mamadi Diakite. Actually, the call going on Jerome, they are telling us. The first foul on Jerome. A look at some of the Virginia defensive numbers. These have become staples of Tony Bennett's program, and they're just as good this year defensively as they've ever been. Well, they play the pack line defense, and they really protect the paint and pack it in there. But they do a very good job of moving as the ball moves. They call it airtime. When the ball's in the air, they are moving. They not only help, but they recover and recover very effectively. DeAndre Hunter driving into the paint. And a block is called on Cam Reddish. Hunter, the best pro prospect on the Virginia team. And they've really got three star players in Guy, Jerome, and Hunter. Kyle Guy, the leading scorer, their best three-point shooter. Ty Jerome, their best passer. But DeAndre Hunter, their best all-around player. Averages... You know, 14 points a game, five and a half rebounds. He is long-armed. He is very athletic and is coming off, I thought, a great performance against Virginia Tech. It was a, a, his best all-around performance. He operated in the post. He faced up. He knocked down threes. He had 21 points and five boards against Virginia Tech. Reddish will bring it up this time for Duke. Guy is on him. Hunter is on Barrett, who's scoring better than 23 points per game. Williamson again crashing his way in rejected by Diakite. Well Diakite did a great job of staying in front of Zion Williamson. They isolated him on the right side and it was really one on one defense. That was an excellent job by Diakite. Virginia won in this building a year ago 65 63 big late moments for Guy and Jerome at Virginia with the Michigan loss earlier today at Wisconsin the only remaining undefeated team in the country boy Hunter passed up a three he'll settle for a two boy a terrific drive by Kyle Guy it was a bobbled pass by Jack Salt but he kicked it right out to Hunter and Hunter drove it that was really impressive by Virginia off essentially a broken play yeah, Hunter a guy who can score from anywhere outside inside Williamson for three followed by Jack White to tie it up Jack White coming off a game in which he went 0 for 10 against Syracuse that's got to make him feel good to see that go through the basket nobody blocked him out 
Duke's already taken five threes in this game. They took a program record 43 threes Monday night. Granted, an overtime game, and granted, it was Syracuse with a zone. So you're going to take more threes. But they took a ton of them on a Monday night. We'll see if they try to force it inside more here tonight. Tough to do against Virginia as Guy gives the Cavs the lead. Yeah, you have to be prepared to knock down perimeter shots against both Syracuse and Virginia, even though they play different defenses. There are some similarities. And, you know, that, Dan, is where I think that an opponent can hurt Virginia, and that's on the glass. You know, in the past, Virginia has had in the NCAA tournament a couple times some problems with Michigan State in large measure because the way that Michigan State rebounds the ball and two offensive rebound stickbacks already in this game for Duke. Jerome can't get the shot off. Diakite will take a three and down with the rebound is White. R.J. Barrett, great matchup with DeAndre Hunter. Here comes Zion Williamson and a foul. Going against Virginia to take us to the first media timeout of the night. Tied at seven in the early going here in Durham. ESP. We'd like to welcome those of you who just saw Kentucky defeat Auburn in a thriller. With a big matchup of the SEC, we got a big matchup in the ACC here in Durham right now, along with Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, I'm Dan Schulman at number four, and the last remaining unbeaten team of the country, Virginia, with a two-point deficit against Duke here in the early going, and one of the reasons why Duke is leading, Jay, they're doing a great job so far on the offensive glass. Well, there's been so much switching going on and on to exchanges and ball screens that there have been some favorable matchups once shots have gone up, and Jack White had a a stick back and a dunk. The offensive glass has been very good to do. Zion Williamson right into the chest of Jack Saul, who says, what did I do? Williamson with a chance for a three-point play. Tony Bennett talking with one of the officials, saying that ball went out of bounds before Zion Williamson picked it up. But once Braxton Key lost his balance, that allowed Zion Williamson to get past. And Jack Salt. Looked like he had his foot on that line, even if he was trying to draw a charge. That's where you have to jump and go straight up if you're inside that restricted arc. First on Salt, Duke extends the lead to five. If you're just joining us now here on ESPN, no Trey Jones for Duke. The sprained AC joint in his shoulder, keeping him out tonight. The good news for the Blue Devils, announced a couple of days ago by Mike Krzyzewski, the injury may be not as severe as was originally thought. Coach K used the word stable when describing that shoulder to us yesterday, but he is not in the game here tonight. Baseline DeAndre Hunter, and he's fouled by Javon Deloria. Boy, just five seconds left on the shot clock when Deloria fouled. Duke is doing a lot of switching. This is a little bit of a, a different Virginia offense this year. Instead of running that three-man motion they call sides the majority of a game, they're setting a lot more ball screens and keeping things a little bit wider uh, instead of, of closer to the lane where they're getting a, a lot of fade screens, back screens, and the like, and rescreen action. And Duke's overplaying. Virginia trying to drive that overplay. Kyle Guy, great patience. Got a couple of defenders in the air and a bucket to snap a 7-0 Duke run. Well, and there's an example. Kyle Guy, they are taking his shot away, so he is looking to drive and is driven very effectively. Barrett can't get the finish. Another offensive rebound. This time it's Bolden. Well, how about that defense by Kyle Guy? Sat right on that spin by Williamson. Barrett hangs, won't go. Ball still loose. He got it back. And this time we'll finish. R.J. Barrett, the leading scorer in the ACC, at better than 23 points per game. Pretty impressive for R.J. Barrett to stick with it and go right through the chest of Jack Salt. And Jack Salt is as big and strong as any linebacker in the NFL. Kihei Clark, the freshman from Woodland Hills, California, number zero, but at the game for the first time now for Virginia. Pull-up jumper DeAndre Hunter will rattle and drop. How much has he improved from last year to this? He is a much more confident player, and DeAndre Hunter is a complete basketball player now. Little pull-up jumper, he can stretch it out to three, knocks his free throws down over 80%. He's a big-time talent. The drive by Reddish. And that one will go soft touch high off the glass. And talk about confidence. 
You're seeing a very confident Cam Reddish. And he was really struggling offensively going into the Florida State game. He looks like a completely different player on the offensive end right now. Five-point lead, Duke. Pull-up jumper, Hunter over Bolden, not there. And a good box out there by Jack White. Barrett initiating a lot of the offense for Duke in the absence of Jones. Can't finish off the glass. You know, Virginia only sends a couple of guys to the offensive glass. Jack Salt and DeAndre Hunter will be the only guys that go. That means they're going to get three guys back. What a drive. And count the bucket. That'll be a goaltending call to bring... Virginia within three. This is an infinity timeout for the win. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime, presented by H&R Block. A huge game here in the ACC and nationally, quite frankly, with Virginia and Duke, number four Virginia, number one Duke. Duke up three in the early going. Williamson, a couple of strong moves inside. Duke's got six offensive rebounds. They haven't turned it over yet in this game. They're trying to avenge a defeat on this court to Virginia last year. Duke also trying to avoid losing two in a row. The only time they've ever lost at home as a number one team to a school other than North Carolina ever was Monday night against Syracuse in overtime and Virginia has never defeated a number one team away from home so a couple of interesting historical facts this is also a huge game at the top of the ACC standings as Barrett goes strong to the rim and draws the foul any time that Virginia gives up a baseline drive or anything to the baseline there's really going to be no help that is not a principle of the pack line defense you want to influence everything to the middle and once it's baseline, it's pretty much over. It just breaks the defense down completely. And what Duke is trying to do is try to get some movement so that they can attack the defense because this is such a well-schooled defense in this pack line. Their positioning is their help, and Virginia is always in good position. And we had a lane violation, I think, on Braxton Key, so R.J. Barrett's going to get another shot. Here's what I've never understood about this. When there's a lane violation, first of all, I think if the shot goes in, there shouldn't be any worry about a lane violation uh, on either team, unless there's a foul. When it doesn't go in, the non-violating team should get the ball. They shouldn't get another free throw. They should get the ball. Barrett takes advantage of the extra opportunity and knocks it down. Virginia down by four. Their four wins in the ACC have been by an average of better than 20 points per game. They, uh, they just dismantled a very good Virginia Tech team in their last game during the week. This is obviously a great test for both of these programs. Great patience inside by the seven-footer Jay Huff. Jay Huff has really improved his game. And now he gives Tony Bennett a legit eight-man rotation. And he's got a beautiful shooting stroke and shoot it out to three-point range. Very comfortable with his back to the basket as well. And he's from right here in Durham. Barrett for three to extend the lead to five. If Duke can start consistently knocking down perimeter shots, this doesn't have to be a great three-point shooting team, but they have to be consistent in knocking down shots at a higher rate. It's going to be really hard to beat this team. Good fake by Huff, and he'll get all the way to the rim. And that ability to shoot the three-point shot got Marquise Bolden to leave his feet and opened up that drive. That was the sides offense that Virginia likes to run. Alex O'Connell in the game for Duke had some big minutes against Syracuse. They were shorthanded. He played 34 minutes, knocked down four threes. Well, Huff has really given a nice energy to this Virginia team coming off the bench. Reddish showing his handle, knocked out of bounds by Key. Well, Jay Huff, who shoots 71% from the field, good shot fake. And R.J. Barrett just couldn't get there in time to take the charge and just kind of slid out of the way. The long arms of Huff helped him extend to dunk that ball. Really good start by Jay Huff when he came off the bench. Shot clock at three. O'Connell didn't know it. And finally, when he heard the crowd roar, he forced up a shot, but it was blocked. And that's a shot clock violation on the Blue Devils. Yeah, Duke should have known that, but... That's a, a, another area where Trey Jones would have been really effective and would have let everyone know. He's the best communicator on this Duke team, and not having him in the game really affects everything. 
And that play brings O'Connell to the bench, gets Jack White back in there for Duke. Again, they are big tonight without Jones. Everybody on the floor right now but at least 6'7", but in Jones, they are missing one of the great perimeter defenders in the country. I think he happens to be the best defender in the country, and it's not just on the ball. It's off the ball as well. He, he's the best freshman defender that Mike Krzyzewski has ever had, and I don't, I don't even hesitate to say that. Williamson into the paint. Gets around Diakite, but helped by Huff, who continues to help the Cavs off the bench. It is amazing what a good help and recover defensive team this Virginia team is. Everybody sees the ball, they move as the ball moves, and just as Zion Williamson gets past and gets to the basket, Huff, with those long arms, is able to block it. Now a deflection on the inbounds causes a turnover, and then Guy gives it right back. Barrett. Behind, between the legs pass back to Williamson. And Kihei Clark comes up with a steal for Virginia. Well, not a bad uh, on-ball defender himself. Kihei Clark is a guy who changes the game for Virginia with his pressure. He can get up underneath you. He's only 5'9", maybe, might be 5'8", but he's a good player. Knocked some shots down against Virginia Tech when he hadn't been shooting the ball particularly well, especially that one before the half. He just went right around Williamson, but he missed the layup. Now Zion in traffic, jams it home with a right hand. Virginia going after the ball low, Guy, and then Jerome makes a gamble, and that opened up the lane. Huff tries to block it, but he couldn't get all the way over to it. Hit him on the arm. And yet, Zion Williamson strong enough to finish that play in spectacular fashion. Wow. You know, you understand him wanting to be known as more than a dunker because he's much more than a dunker. He keeps doing things like that, though. Dunking is always going to be the first topic of conversation. If you're going to be known for something, that's not a bad thing to be known for. <laughs> The second foul on Huff. He goes to the bench. Hunter back in. Virginia gets smaller now with Diakite in effect at the five. And like I always say, if you don't want to be known as a dunker, you can always lay it in. <laughs> but please don't. <laughs> I think on uh, game day this morning, reset the over-under on dunks at two and a half, I believe, for Williamson. Yeah, I took the over. Took the over. He's got one in the books. Hunter sizing up White. Nice touch on the 16-footer. That's an NBA move. The inside pivot. A little jab step. If you bring your arm down, he's going to shoot it. When you get off balance, he's going to drive it. DeAndre Hunter is a terrific player. Williamson again, and it'll go. I mean, who's better in the country at absorbing contact and finishing through it than Zion Williamson? I mean, he took a body bump. I'm not saying he was fouled, but he took a body bump in contact and still was able to finish that play. Got the physique to uh, to pretty to absorb contact pretty well, doesn't he? Yeah, it? I mean it's the physique, <laughs> but also he's got tremendous body yeah. balance and he keeps his head on the rim. I mean, and his eyes up, and then he can hang there a while too. That doesn't hurt either. Long two for Kyle Guy. It's a three-point game. 7:40 to go in the first half. Williamson gives it up to O'Connell. Elevates in the paint and scores again. Well, Zion Williamson got off to, for him, somewhat of a slow start, but he has heated up 11 points in the ball game against Virginia. Not known as a dunker, but he can dunk. Dang, that's big time. Zion Williamson is averaging 25 points per game in ACC play. And we were joking around about him not wanting to be known as a dunker. But I'll tell you what, he has put up some memorable Sports Center top 10 dunks in his short time in a college uniform. And one of them came in this game and got fouled. And for more on Zion Williamson and his high flying.
Here's Maria Taylor. Well, it's funny, Jay, before the game, I asked associate head coach Jason Williford, how do you guard Zion? And we basically said we got to throw bodies at him, Diakite, Huff, Hunter, and see who does best. But in that last huddle, Tony Bennett saying, we just have to make it more difficult for him to get the ball. He can't catch it with two feet in the paint, and we have to get pressure and keep the ball out of his hands as much as possible. That's a great point, Maria. The other thing you have to do against Zion Williamson is really make him guard. You know, I think it, as best you can, you go right at him. And if you pick up a foul or two, that can be really helpful. It'll stay with Virginia. Monday, another great college basketball doubleheader right here on ESPN. We start with an ACC game between Virginia Tech and North Carolina, 7 o'clock Eastern time at Chapel Hill. And then Iowa State and Kansas, which was beaten today at West Virginia. That game comes away from the fog. Both games also available on the ESPN app. That Kansas loss, may, and it's still very early, but we always talk about Kansas's dominance in the Big 12. That loss at West Virginia today makes things really interesting. Well, surprising. West Virginia had not won a conference game leading into the one today against Kansas. and wound up winning that game by one, a game that was played in the 60s. But Kansas, without Yudoka Azubuki, is not scoring as easily. Williamson the save out to Bolden. Still 10 to shoot. Barrett misses the three. And we get an over the back foul going against Duke. And really, that's what Virginia needs to do is get on the defensive glass a little bit harder because Duke has a number of offensive rebounds in this ballgame that has led to additional shots. And Virginia is shooting a very high percentage, although they have yet to hit a three. But with some of the turnovers and then Duke getting second chance opportunities. Well, that's been the difference in the game. Virginia snapped a 17 game losing streak in this building last year. This is the first meeting of this season between these two great programs. Hunter, a little bit strong off the glass, but he does draw the foul. Well, you can move DeAndre Hunter anywhere on the court. I mean, he's been operating just off the low block, especially on the left side. And then you put him at the right elbow, and he can drive whatever matchup he has and has shown the ability to hit a pull-up jumper. He, he has been excellent. A look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. Look at how close the last four meetings in this building between these two teams have been. Duke winning three of four. None of the games with a, a spread of more than four points. And none of them having reached 70 points. And that's particularly instructive for tonight's game because Virginia gets their tempo. This is a rhythm disrupting team. This is like no other game that Duke plays or that anyone plays all year long when they play against Virginia. Well, here's how we can put it into perspective. There are 353 Division I programs. In terms of pace, number of possessions per game, Duke is seventh, one of the fastest, as you would imagine. Virginia, 353rd, the slowest pace team in America. That is not to say they are not a good offensive team. They are an excellent offensive team if you look at their efficiency they just play at a slow pace they're not afraid to get deep into the clock top five in the country in offensive efficiency both offensive and defensive efficiency but they do play at a, a they play at their own pace and their own tempo 60 possessions per game now duke averages 75 possessions per game would you expect by the end of this one it's closer to 60 than 75 yes it's much easier to slow a game down than it is to speed one up Hunter for three. Well, Virginia does not go after the offensive glass, so you expect Duke to have a, an advantage in the number of offensive rebounds. Boy, I'll tell you, Jack Salt does as good a job as anybody in the country going straight up and down when he plays D. Jerome with a wide open three, and it rattles in and out. Boy, a break there for Duke. That was a great look for a really good shooter. Well, very fortunate because Duke was very slow getting back in transition, but Zion Williamson was the guy who did. That discouraged Kihei Clark from taking that layup. But that was a wide open three. Williamson thinking about backing down Hunter. Help from Salt. Or usually that ball doesn't come out of a double team on the same side of the floor. Ke Kihei Clark just slow getting over there. Tough matchup for Clark against 6'7 R.J. Baird. Look at the defense last time down from Jack Salt. Goes straight up once. Reddish gets it back and Salt does it again without committing a foul. And he has to jump there because he was in the restricted arc. And as long as you jump and go straight up if there's contact 
you know, it's on the offense because that was offense initiated contact. That's just great defense by Jack Salt. Yeah, if we had an all guts, no glory, all American team, he's the big guy on it. Yeah, he would be on it. Yeah. Had his best game, I think, against Maryland early in the season. Had 12 points. He was everywhere. And that was before when they played Maryland up in College Park. That was really before Braxton Key had become completely comfortable. And Key was doing a much better job now for Virginia. The trio of Williamson, Reddish, and Barrett have combined for 27 of Duke's 29 points. Virginia needs a bucket. And oh. they will get one. What a player he is. Doesn't matter who you put on him. You put a smaller guy on him, he posts him up. You put a bigger guy on him, he faces him up. He's kind of a similar size and build as R.J. Barrett is. Barrett with a nice stop and go move in the paint. Lays it in with his off hand. Yeah, Hunter's bigger than Barrett, don't you think? Maybe a little stronger. Yeah, taller and stronger. Yeah. Barrett into double figures now. Hunter this time driving on a Marquise Bolden. Duke got caught in a switch. Nothing Bolden can do there. Yeah, as best you can, you just don't want to try to give up middle. That was a straight line drive. And... Not a lot you can do about it once it's a blow by. Braxton Key, the transfer from Alabama, guarding Zion Williamson. Now a switch. Jerome on him. Jerome knocks it away. Boy, what a play by Ty Jerome. He has not played well offensively just yet. What a great job. He just looked Cam Reddish right out of the play. I think Ty Jerome's going to play in the NBA. I really do. And he's a good shooter. He's an excellent passer. Those 12 assists he had against Virginia Tech were really stunning saw over the defense got double teamed, found people for easy shots he averages five assists per game as top five in the ACC with a low percentage uh, low possession team you know it's not like they have a ton of possessions but he gets a lot of assists in those in that low possession style RJ Barrett really in attack mode right now for Duke getting to the rim and he's got a dozen he's just wired to score just wired to score Jerome creates a little separation from Williamson and it's out of bounds to Virginia when we come back good one here late stages first half five-point lead Duke ESP Cameron Endor it was an early start for the Cameron crazies as college game day rolled into Durham for the ninth time I'm pretty sure I saw Seth Greenberg at some point surfing he had a lot of balance in the shenanigans they're gonna continue at halftime for the Jeep halftime report but right now our guys are actually kind of busy Reese Davis J will Seth they're up there in their own crow's nest on ESPN plus with an ISO cam second viewing opportunity so if you want to hear what they have to say it looks like they're laughing and have a good time pull up the tablet and and obviously have us on TV. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Thank you. Right now, that ISO cam seems to be ISOed on R.J. Barrett, one of them. Anyways, and you can imagine why, understand why, with the way that he has played recently. I was very impressed with Coach Greenberg's core strength. I've seen you do the surfing. I'm sure Jay Will could do it. I wasn't so sure that Coach Greenberg could get up on that surfboard. Well, I grew up in California near the Pacific Ocean. I have never rooted harder for a, surf a surfer to fall off his board <laughs> than I rooted for that. Yeah. Jay Billis, team player, as always. Well, it is team player because that would have been video we all could have enjoyed forever. Good offense there as Jerome finds Diakite. And although Duke is winning the highlights so far tonight, Zion's had some big plays, so is R.J. Barrett. This is a three-point game right now. Well, impressive for Virginia that they've been able to drive the ball so effectively, drive and finish. And really, it's an issue of limiting Duke to one shot. Williamson can't finish down to Jerome and now Virginia with a chance to pull within one or tie on this trip Nice job by Diakite to tap that ball out. He couldn't grab it. That was a walk yeah. that Virginia got away with there Hunter guarded by Williamson Boy, Virginia is so good with the ball And they move with a purpose. You know, they're always moving intelligently set a screen they roll move to an open area Jerome over Bolden left it short, but he is really struggling offensively right now Williamson fell down and numbers now for Virginia Guy over white counted to make it a one-point game. How impressive was that? 
I mean, Jack White is a really good athlete and a very good shot blocker. Timeout Duke, Virginia right back in this game. We got a good one going at Cameron. Now you can buy faster and accelerate your deal on AutoTrader by putting car buying in the palm of your hand. Start your paperwork online. Choose from actual financing options and receive a real Kelly Blue Book trade-in offer to get a no-surprise monthly payment based on your information. Save time at the dealership when you start your deal online. Auto Trader. Buy faster. Well, for Duke, the big story for most of the season, the entire season really has been the freshman. They're without Trey Jones tonight, but Cam Reddish, R.J. Barrett, and Zion Williamson are all putting up big numbers. They've taken 26 of the 28 shots that Duke has taken this year. And everybody's looking for a comparison, so our crew put together an Abbey Road little mock-up here as if they were the Beatles crossing the street. And, you know, by college basketball standards, They've kind of been the Beatles. They've been treated like the Beatles this year. Well, we can't tell who the Paul is because nobody was barefoot. <laughs> One point lead, Duke, immediate double team on Williamson. And that's part of the pack line defense. They want the ball out of the post as quickly as possible, especially when Zion Williamson has it. And you talk about rhythm disruption. You know, basketball is a game of rhythm. Establish yours, disrupt theirs. And nobody disrupts rhythm better than Virginia. They can disrupt with their defense and they actually disrupt with their offense because they are used to going to the end of the shot clock and they're used to defending to the end of your shot clock. Guy a little bit strong on the three. Virginia was looking for its first lead since seven to five. Duke has led almost the entire first half. You know, Duke's having to play against a five man set defense every time down because this Virginia defense is so good at getting back in transition. White misses the corner three, weak side rebound. Williamson for the putback and a foul. Yeah, Kyle Guy on a switch had to block out Zion Williamson. There was no foul on that. Oh, it was I'm just sorry. a goal. Yeah. It was just a, a goaltend call. Yeah. Ball went in anyway. But you know, Kyle Guy was having to block out Williamson. He rotated down, and that's just not fair. I mean, he did the best he could, but that's not happening. 14 for Williamson, coming off 35 against Syracuse Monday night. Final minute of the first half. And good ball pressure there by White, denying the pass to Jerome. Backdoor cut, stolen away by Reddish. Three on two. And Barrett gets it to go to extend the lead to five. Boy, one of the only transition opportunities that Virginia has given up just because they turned the ball over. That was a great steal by Reddish. Shot clock turned off, and the loudest this building has been in a while here with the closing seconds of the first half. Here comes Jerome. Got the switch, Bolden on him now. Jerome goes by him and draws the foul. And it will be one and one now for Virginia. Second foul on Bolden sends Jerome to the line. A 77% free throw shooter on the season. Virginia overall a terrific free throw shooting team at almost 78%. And that's a big difference in these two teams. Hmm. So much for that. And that'll be that in the first half. Duke leading almost from wire to wire. And leading by five, 20 minutes into this one. Virginia undefeated on the season. Duke number one in the AP poll. And it's Duke led by their three freshmen of 37-32. Maria Taylor's with Virginia coach Tony Bennett. Coach, one difference seems to be second pin chance opportunities. How do you control the defense? Club? Yeah, we haven't done a good job sometimes blocking out. And I think discipline even on slides. We've got to do a better job on that. Obviously, they're very talented, but you can't give that many offensive rebounds and second chance points, so we got to work at it. What did you like about your offense getting back into this game in the first half? Yeah, I mean, they're switching one through five. They're the first team to do that. So, you know, you're trying to spread and slip some ball screens and attack, and you got to make some plays. Um, and we left some points on the board, too, so we'll have to sharpen up. Five-point lead for the Blue Devils at halftime here, but to Cameron. 
We will send it to the Jeep Halftime Report. The guys, Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams, are down courtside, and they'll have the Jeep Halftime Report for you after these messages. First halftime deficit of the season as they are down 37-32 to the Blue Devils. Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest here at Cameron. Dan Shulman and Jay Billis perched high above the court. Really, the difference, if you look at the numbers in the first half, was the offensive rebounding of Duke. That's the whole difference. Virginia shot 58% in that first half, and they're trailing because Duke has second-chance opportunities. They had nine offensive rebounds in that first half. That led to 11 second-chance points. A couple of offensive boards for Jack White and Marquise Bolden each. And that, that was really the difference. And the free throw line. Duke was 7 of 9 from the free throw line. A team that shoots under 70% shot just under 80 in that first half. So offensive rebounds and free throws really have been the difference. Let's go down to Maria Taylor. Well, and Dan, that's not the only thing that Duke is excited about. Those old boards were great, but John Shire, associate head coach, said that they did a great job with one-on-one -on -one matchups, getting them during their offense. But they still want to do a better job with moving the ball. After two to three passes, they feel as though they can get a really good look. And they want to do a better job on making sure that they don't lead to any runouts with their offense. So being very good with their passing and trying to be succinct. All right, Maria, thank you. Ready for the start of the second half of our Sonic Blockbuster. Virginia ball down by five and an immediate Virginia turnover. They looked for the slip and tried to get Kyle Guy was coming off a wide pin down with Diakite and looked immediately for the slip and tried to throw over the top of Cam Reddish, but Reddish stayed between Diakite and the ball. Boy, if you said to Tony Bennett, your team's going to shoot 58% in the first half, he'd probably guess that his team would have the lead. Yeah, I don't know if you can if you can take anything for granted in the ACC this year, especially when you're on the opponent's home floor. Right into traffic, the kick out to Williamson, extra pass from Reddish to Barrett, and down with the rebound is Hunter. He's fouled by White. If Duke wins this game tonight, and I was trying to look at some of the other games that were going on just before us. If Duke wins this game tonight, there will be a six-way tie. For the lead in the ACC at four and one. My guess is that'll shake out before the <laughs> end of the year. There's yeah. so many ACC games, 18 games now. It's a totally different deal. We all like our tiebreakers, but that's a little bit out of control. The Akite driving on Barrett in and out. Tip back out though by Salt. Now Hunter goes around Reddish and makes it a three-point game. Virginia has done a really nice job of driving the ball. And Duke has not really come off of shooters. They've not come off of Kyle Guy or Ty Jerome. So they've really been playing one-on-one -on -one defense on a drive and relying on challenging the shot and limiting them to two at least. Step back by Reddish not there. And a Virginia ball a minute and a half into the second half here at Cameron. The student section was entirely full, better than 90 minutes before the tip tonight. Obviously, this game, with a possible exception of the Carolina game, the most sought-after ticket for the crazies here tonight is Diakite misses a long jumper. A couple of shots for Diakite to start the second half. Reddish a good look. Well, the three ball's not really been a factor in this game either way. Not for either team. And really good blockout by Ty Jerome on Marquise Bolden. Tony Bennett told Maria going off the court at halftime. Duke, the first team to switch one through five against them so far this year. And again, part of that, you would think, is the absence of Trey Jones. Other than Bolden, they've got a lot of guys who are about 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, and well, they're driving again. A lot of teams will switch one through four. Most teams don't have a five-man that's quite as good laterally as Marquise Bolden can be. And at the line for the Blue Devils is Barrett. His whole family in the crowd here tonight at Cameron. And you may have seen that Maple Mamba sign that we showed you in the first half after he made a bucket. They actually played the Canadian National Anthem before the last duel. You were here, the Syracuse game on a Monday night. Each time 
one of their international players is on the ticket is the kind of the face of the program for that night if it's a player who's not from the u.s they're going to play that player's national anthem in addition to the Star Spangled Band. I think that might have been the first time they've done that unless they were playing against a foreign team in an exhibition game or something. So I thought it was because of, of R.J. Barrett and O'Shea Brissett are both from Mississauga, Ontario. How'd you like that? Mississauga. Well, that, was, that was impressive. I think. You spoke it like a man who's been there. I have been there. Yes. I went to one of the finest restaurants in Mississauga <laughs> thanks to you. Yeah. It was called Subway. Yes, it was. <laughs> Don't mention it. <laughs> Barrett lays it in right on cue. Duke has taken advantage of its very few transition opportunities, and any time that R.J. Barrett gets in the open court, that's where he can be at his most dangerous. Salt not really looking to score all that often. He got a size mismatch with White, and he'll take advantage of it. So big and strong when he's got one and one in the post and catches it with one foot in the lane. You know, that was just a, a simple back down to that left-hand jump hook, and that couldn't have been more than three feet. Williamson driving on Hunter. Everything but the finish, but he does draw the foul. Hunter was sitting on that left hand and Williamson was able to get by him on the right trying to take away that left hand a little crossover and just with the, the right hand not able to finish it well, that's a matchup of athletes right there number three on a hunter that's something to keep an eye on for Virginia a little bit earlier Dan I'd, I'd mentioned that if there's a lane violation you know, I think the ball should go to the non-violating team and the reason I say that is a lane violation doesn't affect the, the free throw shooter. It affects your ability to get a rebound. And if you, you can get the rebound in possession, that can be two or three. Right. And my mistake, the third foul on Diakite, not on Hunter. Hunter's still in the game. Diakite has gone to the bench with three. Is key. The Alabama transfer is back into the game now for the Hoos. Jerome the handoff to key back to Jerome he's got a wide open look at it and Virginia's back within one Zion Williamson gambled for a steal and when he gambled for that and didn't get it that's what helped leave Ty Jerome wide open and he could measure that one almost knocked away by Hunter Williamson retains possession these two teams will meet again in Charlottesville three weeks from tonight White the drive and the finish. Boy, what a great drive by Jack White against the closeout of Ty Jerome. That is unusual for a driver to be able to get all the way to the rim from the deep corner. And Tony Bennett not happy with his defense. Good ball pressure by Williamson on the perimeter on Jerome with 12 on the shot clock. And now Delorier guarding. Kyle Guy in the right corner. We're really fascinating matchups throughout this game. Runner will go for Ty Jerome. Boy, we have seen two big time finishes from the Virginia guards in the first half. Kyle Guy with the left hand, and then right there, Ty Jerome avoiding the block shot opportunity. Quick release, Reddish. Rebound key at Virginia with a chance to take the lead. And again, as always, patience. You use the word, they're unflappable. They just keep doing their thing no matter the situation. Yeah, it's a patient flow. They're looking to score. They'll take it, but they know how to operate at the end of a shot clock. And a foul on Zion Williamson to take us to immediate timeout. When do we come back? Mr. Billis with the best of 94 feet with the quartet of Duke freshmen. It's all the best. How do they make those decisions? <laughs> 94 feet brought to you by Smile Direct Club. Now, your mother coached you in basketball growing up. Was she the toughest coach you ever had? She was the toughest coach because it, to get a good game for her was the hardest thing in the world. All right, what is the, the most bizarre bit emoji Coach K has sent you by a text message? I don't know, it was like one with the heart. He said he loved me, it was like Valentine's Day or something, so that was funny. Uh, worst dancer on the team? The worst dancer? Probably be uh, Javin and Jack. All right, the best dancer on the team? The best dancer would have to be Alex O'Connell. How often did you go to the beach growing up? Uh, not that often. Yeah. When you went to the beach, did you wear white socks? Never. 
Never. Never. Why are you wearing white socks now? That's all I have one. <laughs> That's how I came. Uh, a moment that Cam Reddish will not be able to easily move past <laughs> as he progresses, hopefully, on to, hopefully that doesn't hold him back from reaching his ultimate goals. I thought they were going to show when Zion Williamson could not tear a Canadian $5 bill in half. Well, nobody can tear a Canadian $5 bill in half. Zion can. <laughs> Foul going against Duke before the shot, so Virginia will inbound. They are down one. Their last lead in this game was seven to five. Again, the switch. And this, every time there's an exchange or a ball screen, there's going to be a switch. Jay Huff, who was very productive in limited minutes in the first half, off to Key, and Key is fouled. Boy, that was a terrific play by Huff. He's got some chops out there. I really like him. You know, we watched him yesterday in practice and just marvel at how his stroke has improved from last year to this. He's gotten stronger. His mobility's improved. And he's even improved greatly just from the last time I saw them at Maryland. And he's really become a reliable rotation player to put Virginia at eight capable players. ESPN and the ACC will bring you the ACC Network in August. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. Virginia on top for the first time since about four minutes into the game. Williamson fouled. Yeah, Virginia really looks like they're trying to sit on that left hand of Zion Williamson. And you can tell he's not as comfortable. He can go right. But he's nowhere near as comfortable going right as he is going left. Barrett spinning into the paint. Bodies his defender to the court and puts Duke back on top. Well, Braxton Key did a very nice job of staying in front. He's telling the official, hey man, he pushed off. Barrett and Williamson have combined for 33 of Duke's 44. Jerome gets inside and scores up over the top of Deloria. But he is one competitive player. Lay in by Williamson. Man, one of the few real transition opportunities we've seen for Duke in this game. And after a made basket. And you don't see Virginia give that up very much. But Duke did a nice job of passing ahead. And Zion Williamson, once he gets ahead of steam, who's going to get in front of him? I mean, Mark Dolajai tried to, and the game against Syracuse knocked him out of the game. Yep. Uh, Williamson, you know, Huff kind of over pursues here and he's able to get past him with that right hand. And once he elevates and goes to that left hand, he is such a big time finisher. Contact, no contact, doesn't matter. He finishes plays. Relevant numbers 6'7, 280, 45 inch vertical, 2.2 million Instagram followers. And all those things are related. <laughs> yes, they are. And you know what else is related? The front runner right now for number one pick in the NBA draft. Key inside. Floater off the glass is good. Virginia back on top. This has not been a game of assists. Most of the buckets that have been scored have been unassisted. This has been an, an isolation game and taking advantage of matchups. Boy, it just didn't look like there was anywhere to go, but Williamson found some room. Uh, he's like a big time fullback. If there is not a hole, he will make one. And talk about finishing. There was a lot of contact there that might have made it difficult, if not impossible, for a lesser player to finish that. But right on his left arm, there was an arm grab, a foul, and yet Williamson able to finish the play. You know, Braxton Key's a pretty big, strong guy. 6'8, 225, and it was. Like Williamson didn't even feel the foul as he got to the rim. Out of bounds, Virginia Bowl. Just the fourth time in college basketball history where there's been a split pull. The media poll and the coaches poll where there's been a split poll and the two number ones have played each other. 
So kind of a quirky anecdotal thing, but this in, in if you look at it in that particular way is number one against number one With Virginia being number one in the coaches poll. They are number four in the media poll lay in by guy Virginia really spreading the floor and as they spread the floor and get the matchup they want they are driving it Marquise Bolden going on Kyle Guy and Guile immediately took him to the basket and he's a good finisher as well in a different way Good defense there by Diakite and Huff to keep Williamson from finishing Got it and this is the this is the tempo that Virginia wants they're able to rest their tempo away from just about any opponent they play he hey Clark good fake tried to dish it off knocked it of bounds and it'll be Virginia ball with a nine to shoot when we come back about what we expected close low scoring great atmosphere here but a Cameron two of the top teams in the country going at it Well, the Cameron Casey's they're happy right now because they're actually warm, but this is a group that has been tinting for decades. They represent a very big tradition here at Duke, and this year, 150 tents registered in an hour for the 70 spots that existed starting after the Syracuse game. And I've already talked to everyone who exists in tent one, and they had to pass a Duke trivia quiz that had player achievements, team achievements, and miscellaneous achievements. And ultimately, they only got three questions wrong that's why they got to be right in the center of the Cameron crazies did you take that test I did take the test I took it yesterday but I only had a half hour and I did extraordinarily well <laughs> I am uh, thus earning your spot of the val for valedictorian game. of the tent city <laughs> actually it was a really difficult test Jay will quit and decided to drop the course <laughs> If only he could hear you right now, but he's working on the ISO cam telecast that we have going tonight along with Coach Greenberg and Reese Davis as they are isolating cameras on specific players throughout the course of the game. You can see that on ESPN Plus right now. Baseline drive, Reddish. Called an offensive foul, just pushing off Kihei Clark. And Reddish, I think, saw a smaller defender that he could shoot over. But the referee saying that was offense initiated contact. You know, you got legal guarding position, two feet on the floor facing the ball handler. Yeah, he did. That was a discard. But you can still have legal guarding position. You can move to maintain it. Up putting the ball on the deck against Bolden and then turns it over. A one handed pass. I don't think Tony Bennett's going to be happy with that. He's never happy with any turnovers. Williamson elevates again and draws another foul man has he been drawing fouls all night long well able to get to that left hand especially in transition you know, Huff with the turnover and that means that the Virginia defense has a lot tougher time getting set and Williamson can elevate and he keeps the ball in his hands and if you go after it you know, you're gonna come across his arms at some point Fourth foul on Diakite. That'll send him to the bench as Salt comes back in. Guy is going to return as well for Huff. So this moves Hunter into the four spot. And one of the few times tonight, Jay, we've seen Jerome, Guy, and Clark all in there at the same time for Virginia. There are multiple size mismatches in the game right now. Yeah, those mismatches go both ways. You, know, you hear sometimes when people say, you know, hang time doesn't exist. I guess Sir Isaac Newton came up with some theory that you, know, you can't hang in the air, but it sure seems like Zion Williamson can hang. <laughs> so you're saying he defies the laws of physics? Yes. <laughs> One point lead Duke. It has been this tight back and forth for the entire second half. Switch now Bolden on Jerome. Crossover, spin, got what him in the pass. What a feed to Saul. Oh, what a pass. He took Marquise Bolden off the dribble and then his pivoting. But what a terrific cut by Jack Saul to make himself available under the bucket. That was a spectacular pass. Barrett banging his way inside, finishes with a reverse. These are two outstanding basketball teams. 
Two of the very best in the country. Michigan lost today. Virginia's the only remaining undefeated. Tennessee survived at home against Alabama. Floater again puts Virginia back on top. And right now, Ty Jerome, anytime he gets a switch, he can drive. He's taking advantage of it. He looked like he was asking, hey, give me R.J. Barrett. Williamson follows it up. And they're trading buckets right now here at Cameron. Well, his second jump is so impressive. His alertness to go after his own miss. Well, I want the ball in Jerome's hands. Let him, let him make a play. He gets by Bolden. Corner kick guy. Can't get it off. Now does. Raise the rim in a fresh 30 seconds now for Virginia. And they're going to use it. Make Duke defend from, oh. Make Duke defend for near 60 seconds in one possession. Hunter. And whoever has Bolden on him is the driving opportunity Virginia's trying to exploit. That is no question. That's been going on all game long, trying to get the matchup they want and then driving it. And there have not been a lot of assists in this game. But here is one of the few, and what a spectacular pass. You get caught ball watching. What a great cut by Jack Salt. And a fantastic bounce pass delivery by Ty Jerome. Five assists per game for a low possession team. That's big time. Monday, another great college basketball doubleheader comes your way right here on ESPN. It'll be North Carolina home to Virginia Tech at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Mr. Billis will be at the Smith Center for that one. And then Kansas trying to bounce back from a loss in Morgantown today. They'll take on a very good Iowa State team. Don't sleep on the Cyclones. They got a tight seven-man rotation, but all seven can play. They are a threat in the Big 12. And, all, and they're healthy now. They were not healthy in Maui when we last saw them. Reddish. Foul to buy Hunter, and Reddish will head to the free throw line. Number two on DeAndre Hunter. Well, Virginia Tech taking on North Carolina Monday night. You know, Virginia Tech, when they played against Virginia, that was a team that Virginia would not double team in the post. It's almost automatic that when the ball goes into the post that the Wahoos are going to come with a post-to-post -post double. But Tony Bennett did not want to double team Virginia Tech because they're such a good three-point shooting team. That is not the case in this game when the ball go if the ball goes into the post I mean it's been a spread and drive game but if the ball goes into the post in this one Virginia's coming with the double one of two for reddish and it's a one point lead for Duke well, you have to figure that free throw shooting is going to factor in at the end of this ball game and Virginia by percentage the better free throw shooting team. Good passing. And deflected by Williamson, so it stays with Virginia. I'll give you a number that, as you looked at stuff going into this game, kind of blew me away. Over the last five-plus seasons, Virginia's record, you guys showed this on game day this morning, Virginia's record in ACC regular season games is 77 and 17. Boy, it's, that been, is, it's been a joke, yeah. an absolute joke yeah. the way they play. 2-3 zone right now. And Guy leaves it short. The next best record, Duke and Carolina, are both 66 and 28, a full 11 games back to Virginia. And it'll belong to the to the Wahoos off the leg of Williamson. Whenever Williamson has tried to cross over with his left and get to that right hand, it hasn't been fluid. And he's had a couple times where he's mishandled it. Just dropped that one, wound up. The referee said it went off his leg. Crowd didn't like that Jerome was just letting the ball roll up the court as we go under the eight-minute mark here in the second half. Theoretically, when you do that, you don't have to ever pick it up. Clark with a shot fake. Boy, tough catch by Salt on that bounce pass. Sticking with the 2-3 zone. Good pass. Key baseline challenges Bolden and is fouled. So it'll be the Who's of the line with a chance to reclaim the lead when we come back. In a game that has been exactly what we were hoping and expecting to see. Two of the best in the country. Trading buckets, trading blows here at Cameron. All right, and then way to represent, as always, right back at you. This is a look from a camera 
in the section where the crazies are. That is Sam Klein. He's a political science major from Pelham, New York, a student assistant of the SID office. His career goal, watch your back, Mr. Billis, is to work in television, although he's working on his camera work right now, and he's given us uh, a view of what it looks like amongst the students. This is a live shot of his view from the student section. Why do I have to watch my back? Maybe he wants to get into play-by-play. -play. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll settle this out. Well, we'll argue out. <laughs> Maybe we can agree that he wants to be a cameraman. <laughs> we can save both of our high. It is tied at 55. How about this? Number four, Virginia, undefeated on the season at 16-0. Number one, Duke, at 14-2. Barrett inside for two more. R.J. Barrett with 22. He and Williamson have combined for 45. Well, DeAndre Hunter took a spill, and Duke took advantage of it. Ty Jerome came over from the weak side, but Barrett just shot over him. Sticking with this 2-3 zone. Very long out front with Cam Reddish and R.J. Barrett. Key with an open three. Salt runs it down, and that will be Virginia ball. It was off the fingertips of Zion Williamson. When was the last time you did 33 minutes of a game and each team had only made two three-point field goals? Yeah, a little bit unusual. But this uh, this zone, a good call, I think, by Mike Krzyzewski because it is protecting the paint. And right now, Virginia not driving. They are moving the ball around the perimeter and they have been taking jump shots. And the discussion here, I believe, is about the shot clock. And it's going to go to 27. So I'll take three seconds off it after Salt had it, and it was off Zion Williamson out of bounds. Well, it looks like Duke going back to man to man. No Bolden in the game right now. Delorier is out there with Salt on him, so that changes things a little bit defensively for Duke. Jerome trying to get by Barrett, whips a pass to Guy. And a good closeout by Reddish. And good help by Deloria. Salt inside is fouled. Well, what a great escape of the double team by Kyle Guy. And now Jack Salt goes to the free throw line after getting fouled. He is not a good free throw shooter. Shoots only 50%. But Kyle Guy does a great job of pivoting. Basically jumps out of bounds and is able to in midair to find Jack Salt who got to the front of the rim. Anytime there's a baseline drive, big guys want to get to the front of the rim. And Salt just a 50% free throw shooter, real line drive stroke. Any offense they get from him is a bonus. Back within one. Key now on Williamson. Barrett guarded by Hunter. Reddish out of control. Called for the offensive foul. His third. Yeah, Braxton Key doing a really nice job of being in great help side position playing that drive. There's no question that was an offensive foul. The key has been such a valuable contributor. Came off of Zion Williamson. Jumped in front. If you haven't been with us since the beginning of the night we talked about it off the top of the show as you have seen tonight no trey jones for duke the injury not believed to be a long-term thing but he is not available tonight oh. williamson a rejection and then a miss three by guy what a block by zion williamson he looked like karch karai with a spike back in his old volleyball days and now he's feeling it at the other end what a sequence for williamson Duke by three, less than six minutes to go. A two-handed block, and then a left-handed layup off the glass on the other end. What a sequence for Williamson. Just makes you shake your head two or three times a game. Boy, this zone has really changed the rhythm of the game for this Virginia team offensively. Delorier going to pick up the pick up the block. It might have been that he was in the restricted arc, or at least had a foot on it. And that was the signal given by Jamie Lucky, the official. I think. Wow. Well, he blocked it with his left hand, but he went after it with both. And that was head on the rim stuff. And then the bucket on the other end got some contact from Jack Salt, still able to finish it. And Zion Williamson 
he is more than a dunker. <laughs> uh, and the foul on Delorier J fouls him out of the game. And this changes things because, as we've seen, Bolden's been a little bit susceptible on the switching to keeping the ball in front of him. And the signal was that Delorier had one of his feet inside that restricted arc. So that is it for him. Bolden back in. Braxton Keyes hit 10 threes on this season, close to an 80% free throw shooter. He transferred to Virginia from Alabama, grew up in Charlotte. And he can guard multiple positions. He's a good finisher, and he has really started to play well over, I'd say, the last eight or nine games. One point game. How do you think Duke has handled the absence of Jones at the offensive end tonight? Really well. Uh, you know, look, they played without Trey Jones and Cam Reddish in that trip they took to Canada. We were there for all three games, and R.J. Barrett basically ran the point. And he is shown to be very capable. And in this kind of game where it's not quite as up and down, you know, it's not as, not as big of a deal. I mean, this, uh, this Virginia team, they're great defensively, but they don't put 94 feet of pressure on you. So getting the ball up court is not that not that big of a chore it's just once it gets there then you gotta you have to really move it and move yourself but it's been more of an isolation game really on both ends of the floor and Williamson to the free throw line yet again he's already seven for ten from the line in this game and it doesn't matter what the team that tries to guard this guy they had 35 against Syracuse he had you know, 30 against Wake Forest He's got 25 in this one, 9 of 15 from the field. And that's what he needs to improve on, because he's going to shoot a lot of free throws. He's 71% on the season, Barrett 69% on the season, and both of them get fouled a ton. So even some incremental improvements at the line would be huge for Duke the rest of this season. Holden guarding Kyle Guy right now. Well, that was a lazy pass. Cam Reddish could have taken that away, and he's a good steals guy. Jerome behind the back, keeps the dribble alive. Nice feed to Hunter, couldn't get it up over the rim. Reddish knocked away by Jerome, Duke ball. What a play by Jerome. Backing up, got his right hand on the ball, and just took it away, went out of bounds to Duke. But that was a big-time defensive play by Jerome. That was all ball. And Mike Krzyzewski will call a timeout. Less than five minutes to go. Still a one-point game. ESP I'm on ESPN. A little different vibe for Kentucky these days with the emergence of Ashton Hagens. He has been absolutely terrific. What a pass. My goodness. And an easy slam for Williamson to extend the lead to three. Oh, that's great execution on out of bounds underneath. Well, you don't see Virginia give up many buckets, especially right under the basket. Sticking with the 2 3 zone. Hunter got Williamson in the air and knocks it home. Boy, what a big time play in the middle of that zone by DeAndre Hunter. Young man who is having a great game. Redshirt sophomore out of Philadelphia. Remember, he was hurt at the end of last year, suffered an injury during the ACC tournament, did not play in the first round loss to UMBC in the tournament. And how about that? We're 36 minutes into the game. That's the first time we've mentioned that. Virginia hears about it all the time. A lot of the students here have UMBC uh, foldouts that were in the student newspaper, but it's not something that's going to rattle the who's at all. It's out of bounds underneath. Braxton Key not taking away middle. And you really have to take away middle and make your opponent throw it to the short side of the floor. Even some face paint with UMBC on it. But again, it's not like Virginia hasn't been hearing about it for a while. A double drag up top, back to man-to-man -to -man for Duke. And Bolden on Ty Jerome. This is a, a matchup that he has been driving. Seven on the clock. Jerome driving Bolden. A little bit short, and it is Duke basketball. Shot clock violation. 3.33 to go. Duke by one.
Hey guys. Match still to come on ESPN and on ESPN Plus. The main event tonight, Sehudo and Dillashaw available at 10 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN Plus for the Flyweight Championship. Jay, you looked at the analytics, you've crunched some numbers, and the winner will be TJ Dillashaw, 41% in striking accuracy and I think he is the better grappler <laughs> so Dillashaw will win this feels like it would be a quad one win for either guy no question yes. yeah. no question you would rise up in the net rankings only available tonight on ESPN plus as ESPN and UFC begin their their partnership one point lead for Duke with 333 to go Virginia the last remaining undefeated they've never beaten a number one away from home and if Duke were to lose this game they would have become the first team ever as number one to lose two home games in the same week now again played without Reddish and for the most part without Jones Monday playing without Jones tonight this has been a really interesting basketball game between two great teams Boy, uh, Williamson, I thought he might try to take Salt there, but instead he dished it off. Yeah, it was a late recovery because they were picking up the roll man, and Salt wound up on him. Barrett with a spin and a finish. What a play by R.J. Barrett. He just went right into the chest of DeAndre Hunter. And R.J. Barrett, anytime he can get to that left hand, he is a spectacular finisher. Now back to the 2-3 zone, it looks like. And they are long up top. 6-7 and 6-8 up top with Barrett and Reddish. Clark thought about it. Guy will take it. And again, the three ball not a factor for either team tonight. Kyle Guy, one of the best three-point shooters in the country. And he's not going to find himself more wide open than he was on that shot. That was just a simple catch and shoot for arguably the best three-point shooter in the ACC. He averages three made threes a game. And just one for six tonight from beyond the arc. Barrett driving again. Finishes again. Duke is just spreading Virginia out. Getting the matchup they want. Kyle Guy was on R.J. Barrett. Barrett able to get to that left hand. And Guy just got that left side of his body into Barrett picked up the foul and then Barrett able to finish it 26 for Barrett 27 for Williamson and it's a five-point game and that seems like a huge differential given the way this game has gone tonight Sports Center tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern Time here on ESPN with Zubin Mahenti and Michael Eads. They'll have the latest on the Rams and Saints, the Pats and the Chiefs. Highlights and a reaction from this game. A check of what James Harden did tonight. An unbelievable streak. You got him on ABC later on tonight against the Lakers. Harden with back-to-back 55-plus -back point games. Just all kinds of things going on in the world of sports tonight. Tonight at 10 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Duke led tonight by Williamson and Barrett. They are getting into the paint and converting against this great Virginia defense. Well, Duke has 26 field goals in this game, but only six assists and it is not that they are not good and willing passers this has been an isolation game where they have spread Virginia out got the matchup they've wanted and have tried to drive it and finish plays and Zion Williamson and of late especially RJ Barrett have been expert at that and very very effective and both have had big nights Williamson 27 points 10 of 16 from the field RJ Barrett 26 points 11 of 19 from the field and that's RJ Barrett coming off a game against Syracuse in which he really struggled from the field went 8 of 30 4 of 17 from three in this game against an outstanding defensive team in Virginia about as efficient as you can be the Blue Devils have made their last six shots they're shooting 52% on the night. Virginia's shooting 53% on the night. But it's Duke with a five-point lead as Barrett steps to the line to try to convert the three-point play. The Blue Devils dominated in the scoring department by Barrett and Williamson, and only four Blue Devils have scored in the entire game. 
Reddish has eight. White has four. The rest is all Williamson and Barrett. Duke going back to man-to-man. -to -man. Jack White guarding Kihei Clark. And Bolden on Guy after the switch. Jerome for three. And still, 38 minutes plus into this game, each team has only made two three-pointers. Virginia is just two for 15 from beyond the arc. And Virginia coming off a game in which they dominated Virginia Tech from the three-point line. They made 13 threes in that game against Virginia Tech. Barrett gets into the paint again. Help from Salt. Ball's loose. Williamson has it. Shot clock didn't reset. Ball never touched the rim. Reddish with a force, and it's Virginia ball. A minute 15 to go. Two-possession game. Hunter the drive. Off the rim and down to Bolden. Boy, what a big play. DeAndre Hunter with a great drive. Went to the right hand on the left side of the bucket and just couldn't get it to go. Just rolled off the rim. And that's the difference between a, what, what would have been a one possession game if that goes down. And then Duke with the opportunity to put down a couple free throws. 19 foul, one and one for Bolden. Who has played 32 point, 32 minutes tonight, important minutes, but looking for his first point of the game. Boy, this free throw right now, if it goes in, makes it a three possession game with a minute nine left in regulation. Boy, what a big play. That miss was by DeAndre Hunter. Down by seven, a minute nine to go. Duke Virginia's, and man to man. Yep. And Virginia's got to play a little bit more quickly than they generally play, obviously, given the situation. Final minute. That gets a big roar out of the crowd. And a foul going against the Blue Devils. It'll be on Jack White. And it's double bonus for Virginia, so two free throws coming, and it's a good situation for the Cavs to get a couple of shots from the free throw line. No time coming off. Yeah, even though that does stop the clock, though, the one positive in that foul is it takes away the opportunity for Virginia to hit a three. Now the, the, really, the decision right now for Virginia is do they want to play straight up or do they want to play the foul game? You know, Virginia, the better free throw shooting team, do they want to put Duke on the line? What would you do? Well, right now, I think they have to foul. Yeah. I don't think they have a choice. Yeah. Kicked out of bounds by Hunter Duke Ball. And Duke's got some guys, as we mentioned, decent free throw shooters, but not locks at the line, and you want to extend the game any way you can. I mean, the guy that you really want to foul, I think, is Williamson. Barrett gets away from traffic, gets it into the front court. And it stays with Duke off the foot of Hunter out of bounds. He called a foul. Jamie Leckie oh, called right. a foul. Yep. Called on Hunter. And that's the 10th. So two free throws the rest of the way for Duke. Duke as a team, Chase. You get one more look, just 57%, 13 for 23 from the line. If this one goes in, I think Mike Krzyzewski is going to want to call a timeout. A really remarkable for Duke to find itself in this position with Trey Jones unable to play in this game. Made them both, eight-point game, timeout. Well, big games for both R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson. Interesting comments recently from Zion saying, hey, I, I don't want to be known just as a dunker. 
kind of hated to all the being classified as a dunker because you know, I feel like Coach K would just recruit me if he thought I was a dunker, but I guess people on the outside don't understand that. Well, Zion Williamson doing everything in this ball game, putting it on the deck. He rebounded at a high level, defended at a high level, and finished plays through contact, and there was a fair amount of contact, and blocked that shot in a big fashion, in a spectacular fashion. 27 points for Zion Williamson, 10 of 16 from the field, 7 of 12 from the line, 9 rebounds, and an assist in this one. He is more than a dunker. And this is the biggest lead of the game for Duke. If you haven't been with us the entire night, most of the second half has been back and forth within a point, two, maybe three, but it's eight now, which is 44 seconds to go. Guy to key for the slam. Two possession game. I think they foul right. Oh, it almost got Ooh. a steal. A key gets called for reaching in, and Williamson will get a couple of free throws. Boy, the numbers that R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson put up are remarkable. I mean, th and this is the first time in a long time in this game that somebody's going to put up 70 points. Well, they're both averaging over 20 points per game, and the history of the ACC, including... Williamson and Baird if they manage to continue these numbers they'll become the fourth and fifth freshman ever to average 20 points per game in the ACC Marvin Bagley the third is one of the others and a couple of great players from Georgia Tech in the 80s and Mark Price and Kenny Anderson I right, missed them both and I think that's that's why I felt like you wanted to foul Zion Williamson I think that's where Virginia's got to go again they got to get going here those are valuable seconds coming off the clock. Guy. Elevator screen. What a look for Kyle Guy, and it's a one-possession game with 23 seconds to go. That's the first time that Virginia's run that play in this game. It worked against Virginia Tech in their last game. Just a little elevator screen on the wing. Two screeners. Kyle Guy goes through the middle of it, and they just basically close the doors. So watch Kyle Guy at the elbow, the left elbow. Now he's gonna go through that little elevator, the doors close on Cam Reddish, and it gives him just enough time to get that shot off. A really impressive call by Tony Bennett to get Kyle Guy that shot. And a terrific job by Jack Salt to close the doors on that gate. And right now we got a one possession game if you can get a five second call or a steal off the inbounds that's exactly what virginia wants to do but then they want to foul right away you can't get let, let much time go off the clock and make a lot of decisions if they can get the ball back into the hands of williamson i think that's whom they want to foul williamson seven for 14 from the line tonight barrett five for nine both below their season percentages he can run the baseline barrett and with him not giving the ball up, Jerome will give the foul, keep too much time from coming off the clock, and send Barrett to the line for two. Barrett five of nine from the free throw line in this one. Made his last two and shot it very confidently. That's three confident strokes in a row for R.J. Barrett. He puts this in. It'll be his 30th point. Wow. His fourth 30-point game of the season. And it's a five-point lead. Reddish on Guy. Barrett on Jerome. Down to 14 seconds. Don't have to have a three, but you got to have something. Hunter misses everything. And Key is fouled on the putback, but we're under nine seconds to go. It just took Virginia too long to get into something. Number two, Michigan losing earlier today for the first time this season. Number three, Tennessee surviving at home against Alabama. And this is number four, an unbeaten Virginia. Down by four to number one, Duke.
Made them both. Three point game and a timeout. No, no, just no, just no a timeout. substitution. Yeah, just, just a substitution. Sub. Yep. As Coaches will do that. They they yeah. they send somebody to to the scorers table so they can get the get the clock to stop. He comes out. Clark comes in, and the immediate foul will send Cam Reddish to the line. Seventy-two percent on the season. And Cam Reddish, the best shooter, uh, perimeter shooter on this team, has got a great stroke. One for two tonight. And this is the kind of game if Duke's going to win the national championship they're going to have games where they're going to have to make free throws no on the stretch that's exactly right it just a, it's been both teams have been very impressive have fought hard but for for Duke to play this well without Trey Jones I don't want to say I'm surprised but I, I guess I am a little bit surprised this is now the most points Jay that Virginia has given up in a game this year one of two, four-point game, 8.3. Got to go. He lost it. Got it back. And Amen. that'll be the game. The bucket will count. It'll be a two-pointer for Hunter is the signal. But the Duke Blue Devils beat the Virginia Cavaliers 72 to 70. Hey, over to Cameron tonight. And let's start the countdown to the rematch 21 days from now in Charlottesville. Number one Duke beaten by Syracuse on a Monday. They come back and without Trey Jones, they beat Virginia in a really good game tonight. 72 to 70 here in Durham. Coming up next, UFC fight night prelims from Barclay Center. For Jay Billis, Maria Taylor, and our crew, I'm Dan Schulman saying so long from Durham. And thanks for watching. Now let's send you out to Brooklyn.